So, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm Jane Hatton, as it says up there. And just to introduce myself, like all of us, there are lots and lots of different aspects to me as a person that make me who I am. Um, one of the quite exciting ones at the moment is that I'm a grandmother. Yay! I had the most amazing granddaughter who was born four months ago, and she's amazing. And I've lied there, actually, I'm 58, not 53, but hey, you know, a woman can lie about her age if nothing else. <clears throat> And I'm also disabled. Now, I'm not obviously disabled like half the SMA people in this room are, and I'm feeling a bit out of fashion, really, not, not, not having a, a, a SMA, but I'll come back to that in a moment. So I am disabled, and being disabled impacts on a lot of what I do, but it doesn't define me as a person. Um, and my story, which I'm not going to share with you now because I've got other people's stories who are more interesting to share with you, is different from Martin's in that I didn't become disabled until I was 44. So I represent 83% of disabled people who weren't born with their impairments. They acquire them at some point in their later life. Well, 20% of the adult population is disabled, some kind of impairment. 20%, that's one in five. If as an organisation we decide we're not going to employ disabled people, that's a hell of a lot of talent that we're missing out on. And when I talk to employers, one of the biggest problems they're facing right now is skill shortages especially with the dreaded word B, and I hope that doesn't come up much today at all, but you know, the uncertainty of what happens after B um, and the skill shortages. And my argument is actually we don't have skill shortages. We have the skills here. We're just not looking in the right places. And if we're ignoring 20% of the population, you know, we're doing ourselves a huge disservice. And then this thing about disabled people being off sick all the time. If you actually think about that, someone who's an amputee, has hearing loss, has sight loss, they're no more likely to have colds or flu or anything else than anybody else is, is likely to have. But also, on top of that, if we are, as disabled people, every day battling against symptoms that we might have, side effects of drugs that we might have, and then we get a bit of a sniffle, we're not going to phone in sick, we're used to it. So the research suggests that there is significantly less sickness absence from disabled people as a whole. There will, of course, be individual variations. But if you look at disabled people as a whole, up to 30% less sickness absence. So that's certainly worth considering. <clears throat> 